you throughout the day, every day, yet many people don't understand it and actually fear sitting down and discussing Finance 111. Don't you want to know what you have and if you made a few bucks in the market? Well, this is where Donna LaScala comes in. She's the president of Comprehensive Divorce Solutions in New York, and she's also a certified divorce financial analyst. Donna teaches clients all about this so they can survive and thrive. Donna, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Alyssa. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure having you. So how do you help people get to the reality of where they financially are, especially if they're going through a divorce? Well, you know, I think the first thing is to be very realistic and down to earth about what the situation is that you're going through. And a lot of people don't like to face their finances because of the mindset that they have and they come at it from a position of fear. So the first thing I try to find out is what buttons are being pushed for them. And once we have determined what it is that they've got running through their head about their finances, I can help them come to the reality of it. And it really is just a matter of putting it all down on paper. Because when you see it in front of you, then it becomes something tangible that you can deal with. Yeah. And does that help people change the mindset? Um, And one word that we're going to use throughout this show is gratitude um, and and get them towards gratitude, which will result in confidence. And when they have confidence, they're going to understand this really clearly. Absolutely, because most people, as I said, come at money from a position of fear or a position of lack instead of a position of abundance and gratitude. They concentrate on what they don't have versus what they do have. It's kind of like, I say, going on a diet. When you go on a diet, the thing that you obsess over the most is the food that you can't eat. So when you have this attitude towards your money, you're concentrating on what you don't have, what you can't do, and that's what you want to do all the more. So it leads to overspending, overdoing, overextending, putting things on credit cards, mounting up massive amounts of debt with uh, interest rates, and not really focusing on what do I have, what can I do, what's more realistic. And I think also when you're going through a divorce, so many people are in a position of feeling guilty. They feel guilty that their marriage failed. They feel guilty that they're separating from their spouse, that they're possibly moving their children to a new home, downsizing, not being able to do some of the things that they were able to do as a couple. And that makes them afraid that they're going to disappoint their children, that they're going to not be able to live. But when you come down to it, It is doable if you make some realistic choices and decisions. And that's where I can come in and kind of help them focus on what they do have and what the reality is. Yeah. And speaking of choices and decisions, talk to me about want versus need, especially during the holiday season when everybody is in a spending mentality. Absolutely. And it's something that I also talk to my financial advising clients about, the idea of want versus need. When you see something that you want, that's not something that you necessarily need. You don't need five pairs of black shoes where one or two might do. You don't need that additional sweater when you've got five that you still haven't worn and they have the tags on them. It's a position of deprivation that makes you want something and say, I need this. When you really don't need it, you just want it because you want to purchase it to make yourself feel better. So it's the same kind of thing going back to the diet analogy where you're, you're rewarding yourself with sweets. You're rewarding yourself with dessert. Do you really need the sweets of the dessert? No, not really, because that's not what's helping you live. In the same way, you don't necessarily need those extra things. You're just buying them to make yourself feel better. So once you get in touch with the difference between want and need, and you really look at all the things that you do need, and you've got a roof over your head, and you've got food on the table, and you do have clothing, 
then you can start to make the decisions about what you really do need versus what you just kind of want because you're making yourself feel better. Yeah. And one of the ways that people sometimes try to do this is creating and structuring a budget. How does someone who is going through divorce uh, design one of these with your help uh, for the holidays? Well, you know, there are a lot of tools online. And it's just a matter of, as I said before, putting things down on paper. And sometimes People don't really have any idea how much they're actually spending, and especially if it's the spouse that has not been in charge of the finances or the bills for the, you know, for the family. It's a rude awakening when they see, okay, well, the Verizon bill is this, and the electric bill is that, and the gas bill is such and such. Once you put it all down on paper, you see what's coming in versus what's going out and where you can make some decisions and change certain things. Um, You know, do you spend less money bringing food in instead of buying food and, and preparing food at home? Those are things that you can then do once you have that budget. And, and people don't realize how much they're actually spending on things like, you know, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or, you know, fast food or, you know, bringing food in. Those are the things that start to sabotage your budget instead of getting, you know, okay, I'm buying these groceries and I'm going to make this food during the week instead of throwing it out at the end of the week because you haven't used it and it's going bad in your refrigerator. Those are the things that I can help them look at and say, okay, are we fully catering in this holiday or are we making food at home? Where do we, where can we make those adjustments to the budget? But again, if you don't have it down on paper, you have no idea what it is that you're spending. So even if it's a yellow legal pad or a spreadsheet, if you're, you know, computer savvy, you can, you know, go put together an Excel spreadsheet and just keep going down the list of all the things that you're spending money on. That's when you start to realize, oh, wow, I'm really just wasting money doing these things that I really don't need to do. Last question. When purchasing everything, is it better to use a debit card or a credit card? Well, it has to do with a very personal decision as far as what your cash flow is. But it really is better to use a debit card or cash when you're first learning how to do a budget because credit card spending is mindless spending. Again, going back to the diet situation, it's like eating popcorn in front of the TV or eating anything in front of the TV. It's mindless eating. Credit card spending is mindless spending because it's a delayed responsibility. You don't realize what you're spending because you're not handing it over to somebody. A debit card is an immediate reaction. I'm taking this money out of my checking account. It's immediate. You know exactly what it is that you're spending. So it's much better for a lot of people to do debit versus credit. Oh, always great information. Donna, for people who want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? My office number is 516-218-6919. Thank you so much, Alisa, and everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Donna, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great holiday. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. At Comprehensive Divorce Solutions, Donna E. La Scala provides the tools for people to deal with assets, debts, equitable distribution, and retirement in divorce negotiations. We hold your hand during and after the divorce process, providing a roadmap of what happens next and into the future. Divorce is difficult whether you're initiating it or not. It's fraught with emotion. When you deal with emotions, you are not dealing with logic, making it more difficult to decide what to do with your money. Hiring a professional to assist you in walking down the money path is crucial to avoiding potentially costly mistakes. Donna's goal is to make sure that each individual knows how they are going to be able to survive and thrive during and after divorce. As a CDFA-trained mediator and collaborative financial neutral, Donna helps people get unstuck and move forward towards their post-divorce future. Call Donna E. Scala at 516-218-6919. 516-218-6919. 